Hey guys, so a little bit of a different video tonight. I thought what I'd do is do a really short flight in the 747 using full autopilot and ILS. So I'm going to do a flight from Dallas-Fort Worth in Texas. Okay, so we're gonna take off from runway 17C, why not? So there's departure. And then we're gonna come over to George Bush Intercontinental. And we're going to land on runway 15L. So remember 15L. So I'm going to click on that and go set as arrival. It just draws a straight line. But what we're going to do is come up on the left where it says direct GPS. Drop that down. Underneath IFR go low altitude airways. Now what we want to select is our approach. And we want ILS. So if we have a look, ILS 15R is available. Doesn't look like there's one for left, so that's fine. So we're gonna select ILS 15R. And if we scroll in, you can see that essentially we're gonna come in and then right here, we're gonna capture the glide slope and that should take us on in. So let's head on over to the runway. Okay, so now that we're on the runway, just a few things I want to set before we take off. So I'm going to say our altitude can stay 10,000, although we can have a look at and see what air traffic control have cleared us to. They have cleared us to 11,000 feet. Okay. So we'll come to our altitude. We're going to select 11,000. We can make sure that on our PFD, we can see 11,000. Our speed, I'm going to put that up to 250. Once again, we can see that on our display. So with the 747 and the autopilot, if we have a look up on our dash, there's a few sections. We have our speed, heading, altitude. What we're telling the plane to do is 250 knots. We're not gonna worry about this heading because we're gonna use what's called LNAV. So if I click him on, what that's gonna do is follow our flight plan left and right. So if we need to bank around to the right on our flight plan, the plane will automatically do that. If you use vertical nav, or VNAV, sorry, vertical navigation, that should follow the altitude profile of your flight plan. So when you're meant to climb, when you're meant to descend, that's meant to take care of it. I haven't had a great deal of success in game, so I tend to just control my altitude myself. Apart from that, we have a few other modes that we will talk about once it's time. The other thing to do is just make sure the auto throttle's on, which it is, very good. So essentially, now that we've set that, I'm ready to take off down the runway. As soon as I get a positive rate of climb, I'm gonna click over to autopilot. And if I bring up my map, in a second, oh, well, there you go. You can see it's already populated the magenta line. So that's our flight plan. So once we get up in the air, I'll turn autopilot on and bring back the throttle a little bit. What should happen is the plane will follow our flight path and the throttle will be controlled by the plane to get to our desired speed. So pull back up on the stick now. Have a look out the window. We're off the ground. So I'm going to bring up our landing gear. Click on autopilot. Take away our flaps. And now, you can see our plane is banking over. So this is all, all, doing, all being done by the plane. I'm not doing a single thing. If we go back into the cabin, we can see that it will now start to climb. So you can see up on the PFD, altitude's going up. We can see it's climbing. Just to make things a bit easier, I've just made uh, the lights on our dash turn on just so you can see a little bit easier but yeah essentially we've now got autopilot taking care of this for us our plane is just going to follow the flight path doesn't look like overly fantastic weather here in texas now this is a very short flight so i don't think we're going to have too many issues however on longer haul flights i found that flight sim the air traffic control makes you want to fly really really high and then the last second it tells you to dive down and you end up missing your approach. So just keep in mind that 
I find personally I need to descend quite early on. It's just something I like to do because I'd rather be um, ready than sort of rushing to drop down. When you do your flight plans, you'll see this marker here called D cell. Now, my understanding is that this is basically where you need to scrub off speed, you need to be at the right altitude, but I've found that if you just fly along at what um, the air traffic control tells you in game, by the time you hit D cell, you're gonna be way too high. And then I just find you end up overshooting the runway like crazy. So with that in mind, I'm probably going to start my descent potentially just after cried. I know that's really early on, but as I said, I'd rather be nice and low, not have to worry about dropping too much altitude. So what I'll do is, this is gonna be a little bit boring for you to sit here and watch. So I'm just going to advance time and I'll come back to you once we're around cried. All right, so welcome back. We've just passed the uh, waypoint, which is cried just here, and we're heading along towards D cell. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drop my altitude down probably around to say 8,000 feet. I'm guessing, you know, this isn't something you would do in real life, but I find that I need to do this just to kind of make sure that I can uh, catch the glide slope. Now, what has also happened here is even though I've selected 8,000 feet and I'm clicking to confirm it, the plane doesn't want to move. It says it on the PFD, but it won't move. What I can do is if I click vertical speed and I basically just choose say minus 2000 feet per minute it will now start to drop down so in one minute's time we should be at 8000 feet reason being that as I said once we get to this stage we really need to make sure we capture the glide slope and we need to be low enough to do that so I want to get us into a nice position where basically we're low enough to the ground, we can slow ourselves down, we're not rushing and trying to really dive bomb this thing into the runway. So we'll just calmly drop down to 8,000. You can see that we're coming down at the 2,000 feet per minute that I wanted. And what you'll notice is once we get to 8,000, the plane will automatically level off. It's not just gonna keep diving into the turf. Now, even though we have our speed set to 250 knots and we're doing 290 at the moment, that's because we're losing altitude, and as you lose altitude, you're gonna gain speed. There's not a hell of a lot you can do about that. And one of the benefits, obviously, of using autopilot is just like now, I look out the window, can't see a single thing. It's nighttime here, the weather's not fantastic. But thanks to autopilot, I don't really have to worry too much. And that's also why using ILS is handy, because if you come in to do a landing and it gets a little bit spicy, plane at least has a fighting chance of making it work, whereas I probably won't. Now whilst we're still quite a way out, I want to go through the procedure I'm going to do once I go to land. So this will make more sense once we actually go to do it, but I figure I might as well talk you through it slowly and then as everything happens, hopefully you'll remember it, hopefully it'll make more sense. So by the time we come into land, this speed will be much lower. I'll be trying to come in around 160-ish and what I'll be doing is I'll arm the auto brake, and actually I can do that now to be fair. So in the 747 we have this auto brake, which I'll turn to say position four. On an Airbus A320, this auto brake is a series of four buttons across the center of the dash. So I'll dial that in, that's fine. We're going to be dropping a bunch, uh, quite a lot of flap as we come into land. That'll allow us to drop our speed down, but we won't do that quite yet. As we get closer, we're going to hopefully get the glide slope. We'll see it appear on our PFD, which is just here. There'll be four dots along the bottom being the localizer running left to right, and four dots running vertically, which will be our glide slope. And to capture that, we will click on this approach mode. And once again, this will all make sense later on, but that's what we'll click. And that is what's gonna allow us to use an ILS landing. Just as we get to the runway, just as our wheels are about to touch down, I'm going to turn off this auto throttle and then I'm going to come over here and disconnect autopilot. And then what I'm gonna do is basically throw a bunch of reverse thrust, which depending on the size of the runway, you don't have to do, but I just like doing it just cause. And that should be it. In the A320, as you come into land, all you need to do is disconnect autopilot. 
um, which will then turn off auto throttle. Here in the 747 though, I've found you have to explicitly turn this off. If you don't, as you touch down, there is a chance the plane is just basically gonna panic, throw full throttle at it, and try and abort the landing. So if you're someone who's flying here in flight sim in the 747, you come into land and you find that it either kangaroos down the runway or it aborts, it kind of just bucks up and tries to take back off on you, this could be the reason. As I said, that will make a lot more sense when we come in to land, but just something to think of for now. As I said, auto throttle off, autopilot off, touch down. And the other thing we can check as well, which is enabled by default, is our speed brakes. They're armed, so that's fine, that's all done. Okay, so we're just about to approach D cell now, and we're being told by air traffic control to drop down to 3,000 feet, which I'll do. Now they wanted us to fly originally pretty high, so that's what I'm saying, that all of a sudden they just call out that you have to drop pretty much out of the sky, which isn't overly helpful. So let's drop our vertical speed down. Just gonna increase our speed so we can drop down. So once again, going back to a bit of a basic principle, you can't drop altitude and expect to maintain a slower speed. So what was happening there was even though I've told the plane to come down at 3,000 feet per minute because I want to get to 3,000 feet as quick as I can, the plane was only coming down at about 1,000. So you can see it's doing it again because we've hit our 260, which is what I've set. If I roll this out to say 280, now our vertical speed drops again. So just a, a bit of a balancing act once again, as I said, I'm sure I'm not doing it the most correct method, but this just seems to be what does work for me. Once we get down to that 3000 feet mark, I'll bring this speed right back down. I'll drop some flat, we'll slow her up, and hopefully we will be seeing the glide slope. There we go, bang, just as I said it. Okay, so on our PFD, get rid of traffic control. These four dots along the bottom, that's our localizer, so our left and right of the runway. These dots up here, this is our glide slope. So this is our altitude. And we're, you can see a purple diamond there saying we're way off, and you'll see a purple diamond appear here So I do apologize if this is a little bit rushed. I'm, I'm trying to do it as slow and methodical as I can, but obviously I'm not a professional, so uh, as you can tell. Now what I want to be able to do, I want to start dropping flap. I want to do it reasonably quick. And if we have a look on our dashboard, we can see the flap limit. So first stage, 285 knots, 265, 245. So we're currently at 280. So we're just not quite ready. And just as we're doing all this, you can see this purple diamond has started to appear. So that's our glide slope. So let's really take some speed out of this. We're gonna start dropping some flap. We're gonna drop our landing gear as well. I'm going to bring this all the way down, drop some more flat. I'm going to go to 160 knots on my speed. What I'm also going to do, because now I have this purple diamond on our PFD, which you can see just there, is I'm going to arm approach mode. So approach mode is now on. And what I'm looking for is underneath altitude, I want to see that GS go green. So already the localizer has gone green, which means we're catching this left and this right, which is good. So it's going to line us up on the runway. Now I'm just waiting for this section to click in. And what that's going to do is bring us in vertically. So we're not going to have to drop any more height. It'll do it itself. So I'm just going to drop a couple more stages of flat. That's going to slow things up nicely for us. We can see we've got a pretty decent crosswind going on. If we have a look outside, can't really see much here, but I don't think it's overly nice weather. We might as well get rid of our VFR map because ultimately, if we don't see the airport, it's not gonna matter. You can see it's raining. So this is exactly what ILS is for, for conditions where you really can't see a thing. We're coming in at 160 knots. We have our auto brake enabled, landing gear is down, speed brakes are armed. Now it's just time for the plane to lock onto this glide slope and then we should be hunky-dory, hopefully. Basically just staring at this little GS, praying that it goes green. 
So you can see the diamond is starting to come down. And what I'm hoping is around this dot or close to the horizon, that's when we should see it lock on. Fantastic, so it's just gone green. And notice that even though our altitude is set to 3000, it's now starting to come down. So the glide slope is now guiding us in. That's exactly what we wanted. I mean, you, you cannot see a thing, I don't know. This is live weather over in Texas at the moment, so it can't be a lovely place to be. We should, in good weather conditions, you'd see the runway directly in front of you, but we can't see a thing. It's just a matter of staying calm and letting the plane do its thing and going over that procedure again. Just as our wheels are about to touch down, turn off auto throttle, turn off uh, autopilot, hit the deck, throw in a bunch of reverse thrust if needed. I like to do it just because it's fun. You can verify that our landing gear is down because we can see the wheels. Also you can see if you put your mouse here it says landing gear down so we're looking pretty good so far you can see localizer is green we've made it this little right hand turn the purple diamond staying in the middle glide slope green just following the diamond it's bringing us nice and gently and once again i mean you're just so grateful for having this technology here i mean it's just fog so it does seem like the lights really aren't on at the airport. No one's home, but we're going to come and land anyway. And what we're looking at here is this number here. That is our actual altitude. So it's saying we're 900 feet, but the actual radar is telling us we're only 500 feet. So we need to get ready. Getting ready to disarm auto throttle. then disconnect autopilot. Auto throttle is off. Autopilot is off. We've landed, reverse thrust, brake, use our rudder because it's quite windy. Oof, it is terrible weather here terrible but you can see we've made it there's no lights on at the airport which isn't particularly nice but there you go we're now safely on the ground i can put the park brake on job done so hopefully that was useful for you um you can also see why you need to use ils because for whatever reason there are no lights on at this airport whatsoever i mean that is that is super unhelpful guys but you can see we've landed safely, not knowing where the hell we are. We got it done just as we came in, probably say 100 feet or even less off the ground. Turn off auto throttle, disconnect autopilot, bring your throttle right back and just let the plane land. So hopefully that was useful for you. Let me know if you enjoyed this video, if it helped you, if you have any questions, if you'd like to see more of these style of video. But now it's time for me to go out in this garbage weather. See you guys later.